Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today I am at the BASF Mary Hill Research Farm catching up with Rob Miller. Rob, how's it going? Great. How are you doing, Bern? Well, I'm doing pretty good, and uh, so are these weeds. Now, Rob, you know, in the spring we always say start clean, stay clean, and if that doesn't work, you know, we kind of move into plant now and spray later. And, uh, you know, what's the situation here? I, I think we're behind the, the eight ball a little bit. Yeah, we have received a lot of phone calls the last few days on, you know, growers planted their soybeans, didn't get their residual herbicides on, or even their burn downs, and now the beans are up. And what are their options? Yeah, yeah. And when we get into an IP soybean situation, your options are somewhat limited, especially because you always want to get that residual down to carry you through to that canopy closure. That's what a lot of these soil applied residual herbicides are meant to do. Just carry you through that canopy closure because canopy closure is by far your best means of weed control. But in this situation, you know, the beans are up. We can't use some of those uh, soil applied products like we wanted to, like the metribuzins. So we still want to make sure that we put down that residual product. Make sure you always check the product label that it can actually be applied post-emergence. You might see some crop response, but the thing is you really want to focus on those resistant yeah. weeds first. So we're not just talking about Canda fleabane. We're also talking about, you know, group two and five resistant lambs quarters, the pig weeds, the water hemp's, even the group 14 resistant ragweeds. We want to apply those products when they're smaller and actively growing. And especially in a resistant situation, we want to make sure that they're really small because then we can control them with something else if we do tend to find out that they're resistant. Focus on the resistant weeds first. Next would be the broadleaf weeds. Broadleafs. Broadleafs are always tougher to control. They contribute more to yield, um, especially in that those IP soybeans. Uh, they, they impact yield a little bit more. So that's where you want to focus on next. And after that would be grasses. grasses. Now you got a lot of grass here and we've mm -hmm. seen a lot. Yeah. You, you said it's almost like a grassy, a grassy year. Yeah, we've seen a lot of grasses this year. Mm -hmm. uh, for this early in the season, we're even seeing some, uh, some foxtails, some barnyard grass, even some crabgrass uh, that's coming up already. So that's where, you know, some of those products in IP soybeans, the group one chemistry can be a little bit more forgiving on some of those grasses. It's still gonna be slow acting in some of these uh, cooler temperatures that we've received lately. But for the most part, uh, control the resistant weeds first then the broadleafs, and then uh, control the grasses is the third one. Okay, Rob, um, post-emerge strategy, what can we do? Yeah, so for the IP soybeans, we do have to be aware that some products, when tank mixed with certain others, uh, do have antagonism. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of something like a Bazagran Forte, when it's tank mixed with some group one products, that's where we see some antagonism, so you're better off splitting those applications. When you're going after some of these larger weeds or even IP soybeans, you will see some crop response, mm -hmm. um, just because of the added surfactants in there. So that's where, you know, sometimes we might want to split some of those applications, just number one, due to antagonism. Uh, number two would be uh, just because uh, it's going to be too hot for the crop uh, on a year like this. So that's where when we're splitting out some of those applications, we want to make sure probably five days at mm. least, maybe seven days, depending on the class of chemistry that you're looking at spreading out. Uh, always check the label first. And that's where, again, control those uh, broadleaf weeds yeah. first and then come back in later with the grasses. Final thing on IPs, Rob, what about adjuvants? Adjuvants are extremely important with the IP soybeans, especially, you always want to reference the label first. Mm -hmm. Some of them want more of a crop oil, some of them want more of a non-ionic, and maybe even add in some 28% UAN nitrogen that will actually burn the cuticle to allow right. the, uh, the chemistry to penetrate. Uh, so definitely you want to make sure you add the adjuvants, just don't rely on the herbicide alone. And then be a little bit cautious when you're tank mixing all these post-emerge products, because they do have the adjuvants built into them. So you might have to shave, cut back on some of the adjuvants, or even and, uh, stick with the highest, highest labeled rates. Right. So uh, always check the label or your chemical manufacturers. Let's talk about herbicide tolerant soybeans. Obviously um, another, you know, s sort of a different strategy. What do we need to think about? Yeah, so when you're looking at a field like this, you're still losing yield. You can see the, uh, the weeds from the road. And that's where we still want to add that residual tank mix partner, even when the beans are have emerged because you know, if you spray now with something like a straight glyphosate, even some of the group four products like the dicambas and the 2,4-Ds, they have very limited residuals. So you'll get that second flush of weeds the day after your spray. So that's where you still want to have that residual 
uh, tank mix partner in there, get you through to canopy closure. You still might have to come back in right before canopy closure and touch up any escapes, but that's where it buys you more time. On a year like this, sprayers are behind. We're trying to spray more of the, uh, the fusarium and the disease and the wheat that we're seeing. Uh, just trying to wrap up some of the corn. We still have some side dressing nitrogen and delayed planting as well. So that's where there's gonna be a lot of tank mixes here and that's where you wanna make sure that you use those residual herbicides, buy you more time and actually introduce some of those additional modes of action. Yeah. And you mentioned the uh, tank mixes are always important. Mixing order, wham legs, we gotta get that right. Yeah, wham legs, uh, it's a term for, for mixing the pro some of the products. Uh, always reference that, especially when you deal with some of these three, four way mixtures. Uh, always refer to the label. That's your number one spot because some products and some mixtures actually go against uh, and do the opposite of wham legs. So that's where you always want to check the label first. But in general, wham legs is a nice tool that you can reference as well. One thing that we do get a lot of questions on is when you are adding in that ammonium sulfate, ammonium sulfate goes in the tank first before any product because that is a water conditioner and you must have that in the tank first before adding mm. in any other herbicides. Mm. Final thought, uh, we've got a lot of weeds out there. Um, you know, pre's have been tested, um, but hey, we still got some opportunities. We just got to get at it. Yes, definitely. We're, we're setting ourselves up pretty good. The cops coming up and uh, we have some good growing conditions. Awesome. Rob, great to have you on the Soybean School. See you Thanks. soon. Thanks for having me.